Hey there. So I am back. This is day number two of my challenge and I am doing entrepreneur pitfall number two. So entrepreneur pitfall number two is spotting a fake. This should be very interesting. I'm probably going to giggle a lot through this whole um, uh, recording. So anyway, so let's get started. We're going to talk about how to uh, how to spot a fake. And then first, let's just talk about why it's important. So one of the things I was thinking is that when you become an entrepreneur, um, entrepreneurs are so excited about doing something new or starting to work on their passion or starting their own business that they generally will listen to anybody. Like they, anybody that has information that they think will assist them with growing their business or starting their business or getting leads to clients, entrepreneurs will actually sit and just listen um, to, to anybody. So the unfortunate thing is that everybody is not really for you. So it's really important to learn how to spot people who are not being genuine and who are actually are fake and don't necessarily mean your business well. So how do you spot a fake? So the number one thing that I have learned is listen to their conversation. And when we talk about spotting fakes, I mean whether you're talking about a professional or if you're talking about a client or if you are talking about anyone in general. Spotting a fake is really easy. Listen to their conversation. Because when they have conversation, it's usually spotty. Um, they usually don't go into a lot of depth about anything because they only know bits and pieces of information. Um, the funny part is that fakes are probably really used to regurgitating information that they've heard from somewhere else um, very specifically if you talk about like business coaches or if you have people that tell you they're marketing managers a lot of times those people have gotten information from free webinars and now everybody wants to be a business coach um, some of the information they have is real simple information. Uh, it's something that could easily be gleaned from the internet. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong because because realistic or, 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 or honest professionals, they use the, the internet for research as well. But the problem is that their entire business is not predicated upon an article that they found on the internet. Um, so here's a side note to that. Let's face it, uh, if you are dealing with a person that got their information from a free webinar or they got it from social media or they got it from reading an article on the internet, the truth of the matter is you could have did that yourself. The purpose of you going to a professional is for the professional to be able to help you with facilitating something that you weren't able to do yourself. So a professional should have some level of expertise or some information or experience that is of value to you that you couldn't have easily come up with yourself. So that was number one. First thing is listen to their conversation because if they are talking, they are not giving you an in-depth conversation about what's going on in their industry. The next thing is going to be listen for a lack of passion. Have you ever noticed that when you have people that are running around doing a bunch of different things, um, they're living somebody else's passion. So if they're being fake, living somebody else's passion, they're not utilizing the, the talent that God gave them, most of the time they're a little bit too shallow to sit down and figure out what really is their passion or what makes them great. So instead of doing what makes them great, they run around trying to do what makes you great. We're going to pause for a second. It's going to be some fake people out there. It's going to get that tomorrow. All right. So the next thing is watch out for the hustle. So every fake person that I have ever met is always trying to hustle you into doing, seeing, buying something that you don't need. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is. They always have it. It's guaranteed. They like Brother Man from the fifth floor. And they selling shoes. They selling food. They selling socks. They are social media managers. They got cool cups. They got everything you need. Uh, basically, they have absolutely no focus. They're all over the place. So they're so busy trying to be somebody else, but they're busy trying to be a lot of different somebodies instead of trying to be who they are. So just be on the lookout for that. So... Being all over the place kind of brings me to the next thing that you can do to spot a fake. Because most fakes have undefined parameters, which is kind of what we talked about. You know, they selling shoes and socks. They also selling cool cups. Um, they're all over the place. 
um, nothing that they do is usually matching. So you, you in, in some cases, you can, if you have a business consultant, a business consultant is usually doing some type of consulting. They also do like business plans. They may also do business administration. They do business development. But all of those things are in the same industry. They're in the same genre. So it, it all relates to what it is that they offer or what they do. When you bump into a person that they tell you that they are a caterer and they also do yoga and they also do taxes and then they also have a financial company and then the next thing you know they tell you they sell in clothes I mean there's nothing wrong with that but my question is if you have that many talents and you're doing that many things how can you focus on being good at one I'm just saying so I'll be thinking about those people like remember on Friday when they say they always have stuff but don't nothing match they got ham no burger kool-aid no sugar I'm just saying it's those kind of people you might want to watch out for them um, the next thing, let's see what's next. What can I think of next to help you with spotting a fake? Um, the important part about, uh, when we talk about undefined, uh, parameters is, um, I've seen a lot of people that are doing social media marketing, or they may be doing, being a business coach, or they may be a life coach. Um, and you just have to watch out for that because people are very serious about their business. They get into business and invest money with the intention of being successful, not failing. Um, and sometimes choosing the wrong person to coach you without vetting that person can be very detrimental detrimental to you and to your business as well as to your brand. Um, I've watched people that can tell you that they'll do social media marketing for you, but they only know how to set up a social media account. That's not what all, all that a social media marketer does. Um, you need to know how to provide people with analytical reports. Um, you also need to be able to talk to people about business plans or business strategies or business development if you're calling yourself a business coach or a business consultant. Um, if a person is just doing business cards or just doing flyers or they're helping you find vendors for your event or they are procuring a photographer for you, that is does not make a business coach. They should be able to do more than that. Um, I'm not knocking people that are able to do those things, but I really just don't think that that person should define themselves as a business coach um, because there's so much more that business coaches do. So um, the next thing will be, um, spotting a fake is this is this is the number one thing and I have noticed this they never do anything first ever 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 they never do it first they are not innovative so as a matter of fact right after you do it you can count on it go look on their page and you're gonna see that they just did it because they have no courage and they're not they're not because they don't have enough courage to do it on their own first so they're gonna wait and see somebody else do it and then in their mind they're having a whole conversation they're going she could do that. I could do it. I don't know why she did that and I didn't do it already. So just be careful because you'll notice that they're fake. If you see them doing something really shortly after somebody else already rolled it out, that's a good way to tell if that person's fake. The next thing is you could do a hot air test. So I like this one. I just came up with this one. Okay, I really related this one to how you can spot a fake diamond, and they have like a um, a heat test or something like that. But anyway, hot air test, this is Tiffany's version. Ask them a difficult question. Just ask them a difficult question about the industry, something that you, because in if you're going to hire somebody for something, you should be doing your research. You should know a lot about what you want to go to someone for some help. I'm not saying you have to be an expert, but you need to at least know some buzzwords or have done some research. So if you go and you talk to that person and you ask them a difficult question and they can't provide you with any more information than what you found yourself when you were researching, um, or if they do something like they, they, they start, um, 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 well, I'm not sure. I'll have to get back with you on that later. Um, here's a good example. So like, let's say they say that they do marketing and you ask them, what's the difference between market marketing planning and marketing strategy? And they don't know. Yeah, that's probably not a marketer. Um, let's say that they tell you that they're a business consultant and you ask them their opinion of a specific business model and they have no clue. I'm going to bet that they're probably not a business coach. Um, so all I'm going to say is that person is probably full of hot air. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a pound fail on that one. Um, what else? The next one would be, what's their energy like? Um, I have noticed that 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 people that tend to 
pretend to be something that they're not. They are, they have one of two things. They either have really, really high energy or they have extremely low energy. Um, they never seem to be moderate or in the middle. Um, they don't do things in moderation. Uh, they don't have, I, and I, the, I'm going to go with the reason why is because you can't really be peaceful when you're running around trying to be somebody that you're not. Um, if you are trying to do something that you really don't have the capability of doing, um, I, I would imagine that that either keeps you high strung or keeps you kind of depressed. Um, and then the last thing is going to be Check for the watermark. Now, this is funny. So, I did something. I did some work maybe about a year ago, and I watermarked um, the document, and this person wasn't very bright because they started sending it to other people with my watermark on it, um, and then it got back to me. So, we're going to use that in, in a different context, right? So, check for the watermark. That means that if you are working with somebody and their stuff looks remarkably like somebody else's stuff that you've seen... I'm just saying that.